Okay. All right. Can, all right, everyone. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. The question is, can you hear Lena? Can you hear me? Hello. Can and you hear I, me? I'm, I'm keeping an eye out for our manager as well. She says that we can hear you. So <laughs> let's bring yeah. it back. <laughs> yes, good news, good news all around. All right, all right. Wait, um, let's get let's get back situated. Now, <laughs> can you back. still hear me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, now repeat all the Audrey T, please. <laughs> yeah, well, well, let, let's bring it back to Snowpiercer. Um, okay. You obviously have such a rich history in the theater. Is working in this television space, script to script, episode to episode, is that kind of new and exciting? Like, what, what, what's your what's your take on it as a performer? Well, it's very, very, very different than uh, doing a show uh, yeah. at at um, at like on Broadway, you get to tell a story like front to back um, every single night mm -hmm. and uh, eight shows a week. Um, so you get to like live the catharsis of the character like eight shows a week yeah. with no downtime. And then um, with scripted television, your arc is so long, you know, it's like a puzzle piece you're putting together mm -hmm. um, almost, almost like living it in real time, but not in order. So mm -hmm. it's wildly different and um, it's very interesting. It's very fun because you as an actor have a lot more input, even if it's just how you are in general mm -hmm. on the character than say on a writ in a written script, you know, uh, for Broadway. So yeah. the characters become much more tailored to you and who you are. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine that it's kind of a call and response, right? Between the creators of the show, the writers, and what you're doing with it. Obviously, what you're doing with it is going to inform kind of the next steps in some ways. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. How, what does that process look like for you? I mean, we're, we're speaking on behalf of Backstage today. Um, so I'd love to just kind of pull back the curtain a little bit on how you go about building a character. What's, what's, the, what's the process look like for you, the tricks of the trade? Um, the tricks of the trade for me, it's very physical. I'm much more of a physical actor than a, mm -hmm. I guess, a cerebral actor. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I need the, I need the physicality of the character to, to tell me everything. Um, so once I'm able to kind of understand the physicality of the character, I mean, how they stand, how they, you know, how, how they live in a space that, that to me is more informative of of um, of like how to act a scene, mm -hmm. you know. So it, as much as I prepare and you know get my lines right and all that kind of stuff, it all changes once you're in the space. Yeah. Um, for me, that is where I need to be. And and um, as far as like backstory preparation, it's interesting because when you have this backstory all told for yourself and mm -hmm. going into, let's say like a, an episodic, it all changes so fast because yeah. <laughs> the information then being written is vastly different than what Fair you were enough. coming from. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, oh dang. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is like a constant thing that's changing. In fact, it's become more of a discovery. So it's almost like I'm an amnesiac that's coming into <laughs> this. And I'm like, this is my life. Oh, that happened to me really yeah. like oh. <laughs> you know <It's>, yeah <laughs> definitely so, gives you have to play with at least it keeps yeah. you on your toes yeah well, yeah and it's all about discovery I feel like acting is much more about reacting and discovery mm -hmm. than having it all planned out yeah you know what I mean yeah, exactly. um the only thing that you really need to plan out is to make sure that whatever your emotional responses let's say in in scene d will mm -hmm. match with when you film scene C a month later. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> it's about that continuity for sure. Now, now what you, you're talking about being a physical performer. What does that look like for Miss Audrey specifically? How do you kind of, do you feel like you carry yourself in a certain way? You, you f find out how she walks, how she talks. What, what does that process look like for you? She, um, yeah, it's heels. It's, mm -hmm. it's a corset and a corset will make you stand a certain way and feel oh, a certain yeah. way. Um, especially this tight corset that we're wearing and, um, or that I'm wearing, you know, the, the, the 
clothing itself is very much a character in and of itself for Miss Audrey. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other characters, it's very different. They wear the same thing all the time. It's, you know, um, they almost have a uniform. Or, but but Miss Audrey is constantly changing her clothes. I mean, we joke her wardrobe is like an entire train car. Because <laughs> we're like... A laundry like, closet for the entire... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're like, where does she get all this clothing? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, like, it that corset is so telling. And then yeah. the makeup, the hair, it it all gets you into a certain character. I don't know. If you saw, um, if you saw, I did, um, I did like a, a backstage, like getting ready for Yitzhak when I was in Hedwig and the Angry Inch mm -hmm. um, for, for, for a publication and the videos out there, it's like the transformation from just mm -hmm. me, like every day into Yitzhak. And what's crazy is as I'm doing my makeup, putting the hair on, my voice is changing, my body's changing, my wow, stance yeah. is changing. Like everything starts to change to match into that character. That for me, that's the biggest, you know, that, that to me is the biggest like character development is how I feel and what I'm wearing essentially. Yeah. Um, Cause it informs like if I'm wearing nails, you know, that informs that if I'm, you know, it, I don't know, it seems so superficial, but I was a dancer. I, when I was younger, that's how I acted was through my physicality, through mm -hmm. dancing, mm -hmm. through emoting that way. And, um, and so that is my, like, greatest, the greatest way that I'm able to, like, get into character also, uh, also, and then to get somewhere emotionally, mm -hmm. um, I use music. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that, that makes sense, just considering your, your, your knack for, <laughs> as a musician as well. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned that, uh, I mean, Snowpiercer does put to use your, your singing, um, is that something that you kind of look for in new projects? Obviously, you have such a rich roots in musical theater. You're an accomplished musician. Was the fact that you get to sing on Snowpiercer something that kind of checked a box and you're like, okay, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, uh, they, <laughs> so originally I was cast as someone different um, oh. in the original, uh, in the, the original pilot that we filmed, um, I was someone totally different. And it's funny because, yeah. yeah, it's funny because in my, <laughs> in my um, contract, it was like, she's not gonna sing. And <laughs> it's like, she's not gonna sing and she's not gonna be in her underwear. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> okay, so things shifted a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and then they came back and they were like, hey, we're gonna have you sing. And I was like, I was like, you know what? Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And they, they told me about why, the character change. Um, I played like an archivist of the train in the, in the first kind of vision in the, the original pilot. And then when they redid everything, uh, then they were like, hey, we're gonna have you just be the, the night car cabaret singer. Like mm -hmm. you're, you're like the share of the train. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm -hmm. perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was excited about that. And, and, and also, you know, because TV film is much more of a new, it, it's, it's new for me. So I'm still kind of in the baby stages of learning my way mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. as far as in front of a camera. Um, I'm much more comfortable on a stage because mm -hmm. that is just about what I've been doing since I was two years old. Right? Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And, uh, and so to get these moments where I'm on stage, you know, performing mm -hmm. live for everyone, that is like, couldn't be the best like way to get into um, being in front of a camera. It's like, well, if I sucked in those other scenes, at least I know I'll be good here, right? right. It's like, <laughs> at least I've got one good comfort um, to rely on. And That's the sweet spot, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm, it's been, you know, I've seen a big arc as far as like my acting is concerned. Like, I, <laughs> I can see how I'm getting much more um, comfortable in front of the camera. And, and, uh, and as, a, as a performer, you know, I, I don't know about other performers who are out there. I'm sure there's some watching, um, but I'm hypercritical of mm. myself. And I'm, yes. I think we, we really all are. That it, comes it, with the territory. It, yeah. it really does, yeah. And um, being that critical, it's very difficult. I can't watch myself. You know, like yeah. watching myself on camera is really hard because I'm like, oh, 
<laughs> Blah. Like, you know, what right. am I doing? And, uh, and now that I'm having this kind of like a learning curve, it's being, it's become easier to watch because I'm like, I'm getting better. Like that is so much better than like, what it was yeah. Before. No, I mean, that, that's great that you can kind of, you, you have the markers literally on camera uh, of things to improve on, things that you nailed. Um, yeah. Obviously it's, it's a tough ask to watch yourself back, but I imagine that it's also beneficial. Um, that kind of brings me to my, to my final question for us today then. Obviously, um, this is kind of new territory for you as we're talking about. Do you have any advice for stage actors that kind of want to make that transition to the screen? Um, yeah, it's... To, to go from, so, for st I mean, I guess, but so from stage, stage is very, you're playing a character. Mm -hmm. It's, it's further from yourself, usually, most of the time, mm -hmm. uh, than you are in real life. When we go on stage, we are playing a caricature. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and don't, you know, it, this is just, this is my experience. Uh, I'm sure it's very, very different for other people, um, but but when you get in front of a camera, that goes away. And mm -hmm. what, what actually speaks much more clearly on camera is yourself mm -hmm. and your own personal, how you are, you as a human being. So one is very grand caricature. Of course, you're trying to get to the back row. You're performing broadly. Mm -hmm. You're telling story to someone who's so far away, they can barely see your expressions. And when you're on camera, it's the performance is so internal. You're thinking it, you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're reliving your own experiences through these, this whole made up air thing, you know, but yeah. pulling upon who you are as a person is much more helpful um, than, than looking at it as, as like a caricature. You yeah. know? So, yeah. No, that's all fair. That's, that's all fair. And definitely, of benefit for our working actor audience today. Um, well, I, I'm looking through my questions here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for joining me and congrats on season two of Snowpiercer. I'm such a fan of the show and uh, excited to see what you do next. Thank you. I'm very, very excited. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and, and good luck with the rest of quarantine and then filming season three. I'm excited to see it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> all right. You. Yeah, good luck. Bye -bye. You too. Bye.